Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is John Adler. I'm here to talk about Fuel, a trustless scalable sidechain. Uh, so I'm with Fuel Labs, and these slides will be posted online a bit later. Uh, so first of all, before we kind of talk about our solution and how we do it and so on, we should probably talk about motivation and why we want to do this and how uh, it will actually provide scalability. So what we're targeting is the scalability problem. And as you hopefully all know, and as we've you know, seen over the past 10 years, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum are extremely unscalable, so they have a very low transaction throughput. You have Bitcoin, which is doing maybe three to seven transactions per second. Ethereum is doing 15. Or if you're just counting simple payments, it can maybe do up to 30. And meanwhile, Visa is doing you know, several orders of magnitude more transactions per second. And that's kind of the number we at least want to reach and hopefully surpass. And we want to increase our transactions per second, so scalability, without decreasing decentralization. And you know, what, what do we mean by this? Uh, so we should uh, look at the scaling bottleneck. So there's a common talking point that to use this as an example, EOS is more scalable than Ethereum or Bitcoin because it's centralized around 21 block producers. And as you can see on the picture on the right here, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, there's maybe four mining pools that control the majority of the hash rate. So you would expect that Bitcoin and Ethereum should be more scalable than EOS if uh, validator count or block producer count actually affected scalability. So it's wrong that the number of nodes has any effect on scalability, because consensus is not the bottleneck. So what is the bottleneck? Uh, it's this. It's a social contract. And on Ethereum, we want non-consensus full nodes to be with a four-core CPU, approximately eight gigabytes of RAM, and an NVMe SSD to be able to fully validate the chain at a rate that's about 10 times as fast as it grows. And at Bitcoin, this parameter is different. You know, you want a, a weaker computer like a Raspberry Pi, to be able to validate the chain faster than it grows, you know, 30, 30 times faster. Uh, and on EOS, uh, the parameter is that you want a very powerful server to be able to just barely keep up to the chain. And this is a social contract. It has nothing to do with consensus or the number of nodes. So we want to increase scalability without increasing node hardware and network requirements. So. Why is it that Ethereum can only do 15 transactions per second, uh, which is about double what Bitcoin can do, despite having way higher node requirements? And the reason is EVM execution. Uh, so Ethereum can do uh, more complex smart contracts than Bitcoin, right? It's not limited to stateless predicates. It can do you know, the stateful smart contracts like Uniswap, Compound, all this amazing DeFi stuff. It's only possible because Ethereum can do stateful contract execution. And there's a downside for this, which is that state accesses and state growth are kind of the biggest things that are hindering uh, Ethereum scalability right now. Ethereum's uncompressed state size is around 45 gigabytes, which is you know, quite a bit larger than the 8 gigabytes of RAM we expect nodes to have. And this is why you need to put the state on disk, so on an SSD, and this is why you need an NVMe SSD. And meanwhile, Bitcoin's UTXO set, their state is about 2 gigabytes. So this is kind of the huge blocker, you know, state accesses. So why do, why do rollups now scale Ethereum specifically? So the rollup design paradigm is one that's very nice and the one that's gaining traction in the blockchain world, which is let's uh, move state and execution off chain and use the main chain just for data availability and ordering. Uh, so the separation of execution from availability and ordering uh, is, a, is a new design paradigm that's uh, going to be very exciting to see in the coming years. Uh, and then you can ensure the block validity of this rollup chain using one of three things. You can either use a validity proof, like ZK rollups. You can use a fraud proof plus a synchrony assumption. This is what optimistic rollups is. Or you can use an interactive verification game plus a synchrony assumption. And this is what the guys at Offchain Labs are doing. So why can rollups scale? And we'll discuss the can in the next slide. So with rollups, the consensus nodes are only responsible for making data available and ordering it. They don't execute transactions. And as we saw in the previous few slides, executing transactions is very much the bottleneck in Ethereum because of the stateful EVM execution. And this is very powerful because the, you literally can't do less execution than no execution. So I said can. Uh, there's a catch here, which is you know you often see that optimistic rollups can scale EVM contracts as we currently know it to, you know, 200 transactions per second, 1,000 transactions per second, 100,000 transactions per second, you may have heard. 
So you know, you see calculations like this. You have 10 million gas, 100 bytes per transaction around, 16 gas per byte for call data, uh, 12 seconds per block, and this gives you around you know, 521 transactions per second on ETH1. But that's not the whole story, because if everyone was using, say, a single EBM optimistic rollups, then you wouldn't actually get any scalability, because again, the bottleneck is execution, and you want people to use the rollup and be able to fully validate it with the same node requirements that we currently have for Ethereum. So if you're not increasing the node requirements, your EVM in the rollup will still be limited to 15 transactions per second, despite the fact that Ethereum can process way more data availability. So the unique benefits of optimistic rollup can be kind of compared to sharding. Uh, so sharding provides an increased transaction per second, not because there are fewer nodes on each shard, but because you can execute many uh, execution threads in parallel. And this is kind of the same thing that you can do with rollups. Uh, you can have a single layer for data availability, and then each rollup can be considered as a form of dynamic heterogeneous sharding, where you can spin up more or less shards at will, and each of them can have a different execution model which leads us to point two, which is that you can experiment with different and potentially better data and execution models. And you can do this without hard forking the Ethereum chain. For instance, you could have a UTXO data model that's just for payments, which is what we're focusing on, and which is what we're gonna talk about in the next few slides. You could have a custom VM that is specifically tailored for interactive verification games that has uh, constant time uh, for each instruction. So this is what the off-chain labs guys are doing. Uh, you could have Libra's Moodle VM inside a rollup. You could have uh, you know, the EVM, but augment it with things like state rent or access lists and so on, but it wouldn't be the plain EVM. It would be an augmented version of the EVM. Or you can do things like application-specific execution models. So let's you know, focus on that first one, the UTXO data model, and our fuel, roll fuel rollup chain. So it's centered around a few uh, critical design features. Uh, the first one is the UTXO data model. Uh, not the accounts data model that we're used to in Ethereum. Uh, and it, we kind of have a focus on stablecoin payments, but you can technically transfer any token uh, and build things like non-custodial exchanges and social media sites and so on on top of fuel. Uh, and the UTXO data model, of course, is you know, much more performant uh, and much, has much better state access patterns than the accounts data model. Uh, we're also using an efficient fraud proof scheme, which I wrote about here on ETH Research. Uh, and this allows you to uh, have fraud proofs without having to bother with serializing the state tree after, after each, transactions, after each trans transaction. Uh, and finally, we also allow, or we will allow, a fairly expressive stateless predicate script. So think like Bitcoin, but more expressive because we don't have to you know, deal with all the, the baggage of Bitcoin core. So the, the design philosophy around this is that uh, the UTXO data model is uh, highly efficient to execute. Uh, and uh, allows for parallelizable uh, validation. So we can easily get 1,000 transactions per second on a, our, current, our current implemented system on consumer hardware. Uh, and for us, unlike for EVM rollups, for us the bottleneck is very much data availability throughput and not execution. So we would very much benefit from an, uh, some layer, for example, like E2, that has a much higher data availability throughput. Uh, there's also ease of use. Since we're not doing general purpose smart contracts, we don't need to gas. We can have you know, the, the execution time or the validation time of, of a transaction is fixed, as known beforehand. So transactions are gasless. Uh, and you can think of it kind of like a meta-transactional meta layer, where the roll-up block producer will accept any token, for instance DAI, uh, to pay their own fees internally and they will pay the users on-chain ETH fees. So you can imagine systems where entire you know, hordes of regular users that aren't into crypto can use things like DAI stablecoin payments without having to be exposed to the volatility of Ether uh, and stuff like that. So our paradigm for permissionlessness, because all rollups need to have some way of allowing users to forcibly include transactions inside the rollup chain or you know, become a rollup block producer themselves, so our paradigm is happy case centralized, but always have a fallback to full decentralization. So this means that, you know, in, in, the, in the happy case where everything is going smoothly, there's no censorship going on, there's no double spends going on or anything like that, you might as well just use a centralized operator because it's more efficient, it's more convenient. Uh, but it's always important to always be able to seamlessly fall back to full de decentralization if this operator ever misbehaves. 
Uh, one last interesting thing is that uh, this roll-up chain can serve as a meta finality layer, especially useful for payments. Uh, you may have heard things like optimistic roll-ups allow instant, secure, trustless, conf uh, zero confirmation trans transactions. Uh, this is this is not true. It, it, you know, you you need your transaction, you need your roll-up lock to be included on the Ethereum chain to have any measure of security. The reason for this is that the MEV. Oh, sorry. Now we'll go to point two. Uh, you can, however, uh, have secure. Uh, uh, like you can prevent your roll-up chain from re uh, getting reorged if the main chain gets reorged, uh, because you know the MEV of roll-up locks that are already revealed and they're made public and they're committed to the main chain. Since it is known, then you can just have some shared bond pool, uh, and then if the roll-up operator uh, equivocates, so if they reorg their roll-up chain, then you can slash their bond. Since the MEV is known, then you can actually do this securely. So you can think of it like some sort of meta finality layer on top of Ethereum. So even if the Ethereum chain uh, gets re gets reordered or gets changed, then the rollup chain can actually stay the same, uh, which is nice because now you no longer need to wait 15 confirmations for exchanges. You can actually accept uh, one confirmation deposit or withdrawal from an exchange. So this is very powerful. So if we want to go beyond sharding, so you know we discussed earlier that uh, you know sharding provides uh, you know multiple execution threads. Which is great, but uh, sharding only provides a constant factor increase in transaction per second, right? If you have 64 shards, then you get 64 times the data throughput, uh, maybe under certain ideal conditions. Uh, but can we do better than committee based sharding? The answer is yes, we can. If you have a native data availability layer with only client side execution, then you can exploit sublinear data availability checks, and this, these also scale with the number of users, which is a unique property among all blockchains. So if you're interested in this paradigm, please check out Daisy Ledger. So that about wraps it up. Uh, where to find us? Uh, you can find us on Twitter at, at fuellabs underscore. Our website is fuel.sh. And here's our GitHub. Uh, we've released an open uh, beta testnet that's currently running two of them. One's on Robston, one, the other one's on Gurley more recently. Uh, I think last week we opened up some Node.js uh, SDK code so that you can you know, quickly spin up something like a wallet integration and so on. Uh, so if you're interested, please uh, follow us, give us, a, give us a call or a shout uh, if you have any questions and so on. Uh, that's, what, that's where to find us. Uh, are there any questions for the next couple of minutes? Wait, would you be able to do that outside? Because we don't have uh, time. Ah, sorry. sorry about that, man. Okay. I apologize. So yeah, if you want to, if you want any questions, then I'll be outside. Thank you. Um, and there's Alexi here. Uh, uh, Alexi.